Leibniz entitles uh, one of his only things that he published in his lifetime. The monadology was not published in his lifetime. Um, and, you know, he has a, a, at least two books that were somewhat pub published in his lifetime, but he was most known for in his day, the Theodicy. And uh, it, it did gain a lot of traction, but it doesn't quite entirely make sense without the monadology, but it's, it's like the monadology was developed after the Theodicy to sort of fix everything up. But, this is, but the monadology is in the back of Leibniz's mind as he writes the Theodicy, he, he does publish it and it, and it, does, um, it does gain some traction. And that's why Leibniz is known as a philosopher. But most of what we know about Leibniz, we discovered after he died. All right, so, um, because remember that he was uh, a diplomat and he was very busy. <laughs> So he was just writing tons of stuff and throwing them in drawers. And, and uh, uh, but then um, based on the splash that he did make in the philosophical world, uh, scholars went back and, and dug up what he had written. And we find a lot of interesting things there. The theodicy, um, and, and uh, I think he coined this word. I don't know that anybody used this word before this, but now this is a standard sort of, this is standard terminology in the philosophy of religion. So if you take, um, I think it's philosophy 204, at Cerritos, uh, but philosophy of religion, theodicy is a major concept um, in, that, in that course. Um, so the, and 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 what what uh, Leibniz argues, hinting at some of the details of the monadology, but not fully developing all those details that I described. Um, what he argues is that this world that we live in is the best of all possible worlds. So this is where possible worlds. Uh, you know, he published this in his lifetime, and this is his formula formulation: is that the world as we know it is the best of all possible worlds. There's an infinite number of possibilities. God could have chose the monads differently, but he chose the world in which everything rationally makes sense. And this is where rationalism, you know, comes into the picture. Uh, it's also an idealism because, you know, what Leibniz is arguing is that the world is not really physical particles. The world is really perceptions, ideas in the minds of the monads. And so there's an ideal quality to it and there's a rational quality to it. And the rationalism is that this is the best of all possible worlds so that the world is rational and God is rational because God chose the monads in such a way that the world comes out rational. That's how we know God is rational. And, and God is the soul of the universe, and so the universe is rational. Now, the, the big problem is the problem of evil. If this is the best of all possible worlds, then why do evil things happen? And, and why do bad things happen to good people in particular? That seems to be a moral failing on the part of God. Why did God choose this world so that, so that you know, babies are slaughtered by, um, by, uh, by right-wing death squads supported by the president of the United States. You know, why do we, ex why do we live in a world where that happens? That's, that's not, that doesn't seem like the best of all possible worlds. I can imagine a better world. Uh, and then what Leibniz says is, well, you think that you could imagine it, but you can't comprehend the infinite details involved. 
and God is, on, is the only monad with the capacity to make such a choice. And we have to believe uh, that he made the right choice. And there's lots of evidence considering that cannonballs don't do loop-de-loops in unpredictable ways, but cannonballs go through the air according to a hyperbolic curve and we can predict where they're going to land. Um, that is an indication that God did, in fact, make the right choice. And of course, for many people, they would, they would start by assuming that God is good. Uh, and so it has a force in that direction. If you, if, you, if you assume that God is good and God is infinite and all-knowing, then although we may not understand it because of our limited uh, the limited capacity of our souls, God is not limited in that way. And although it may not seem right to us, we have to believe that it was the right choice. So, you know, um, so, you know, it was somewhat effective even as it was published. It, it did gain a lot of traction because it, it did help people to deal with the problem of evil. Uh, but a lot of the monadology that's in the background in Leibniz's mind is not fully explained in the theodicy. And we only get the real deal when the monadology is later uncovered. Um, George Berkeley, uh, well, let's, let's, let me set that aside. So, so that's the theodicy. This is the best of all possible worlds because God chose it this way and God would make the right choice and we have good reasons for believing that God did make the right choice. Okay. 